entrepreneurship and I gave you an org chart here we're always looking for for people who want to make a difference so you look at our org chart here if you know anybody that would be interested please send them our way uh, again we can't do this by ourselves and that's what we're looking to do so before we talk about creating a vision for your company or an idea or a business first you have to create a vision for yourself and so my question is to everyone here is, who are you? And what do you do for the world? Those are very important questions. Uh, I'm an inspirational servant, and you know, people look at my card and they'll see account manager, or sales manager, director of this. Well, I've been a lot. I've been a president, I've been a, a manager, and I've failed at a, a lot of them. But <laughs> one thing that I know that I was born to do, what comes easy, what I don't have to go to college for, which I don't have, you know, I have a couple degrees where I don't even know where they're at right now. But one thing that I know that makes me feel good and people say I'm great at it, and I don't have to practice it, and that's inspiring people. And all through my walk of life, people said I've inspired them, even when I haven't tried to. And so what do I do for the world? I inspire, restore hope, faith, and greatness throughout the world. People have come up to me and told me these things throughout my life. So, you know, and remembering who you are, there's a lot of highs and lows, uh, and I'll kind of talk about that and why it ties into your vision. But, like I said, this has been a journey for me to get here, and I wish somebody would have told me this a long time ago and it saved me a lot of heartache. You know, I, I built a multi-million dollar business, um, and I always tell entrepreneurs, it's not when you're, you're struggling to make the next paycheck or pay for the product itself. It's on the other end when you're at the mountaintop and you don't have a bill to pay, you have hundreds of thousands of million dollars in the bank. That is even, and you don't know why you're there, that's a tougher position than it is when you're climbing up that. And so a lot of people know I've been on both perspectives, both sides of the, of the hill, at the bottom and at the top. And I'll tell you, I, I, I was very lost and very depressed here at the top. Life is very simple for me. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Especially being an entrepreneur, not even being an entrepreneur, just being a person. Are there, if you go online, are there a lot of jobs out there? Yeah, well, there's a lot of variety of jobs. It may not be something of interest, but if I went to, my, I don't know what, I, I haven't worked in some way, so I don't know what, is it monster.com now that you look for jobs, or is it? Is it career builder? Career builder, yeah, that's a new thing, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm an entrepreneur, you go to career builder, there's a lot of things that, that that's out there that you can pull from, but. For me, it's real simple, and I'll, I'll share an example with you. It says, Jose, I got this opportunity. We can go buy properties, we can flip them, we can make $30,000 of property. So, okay, I'm not doing I like creative things. Then I ask myself, does this fit inspirational serving? Can I, can I inspire and restore hope, faith, and greatness at this opportunity? And when I filter that through, I was like, no, I can't do that. A teacher calls me up and says, Jose, I need you to be. I, I need your help. Can you come speak to about 30 students? And he called me up in the evening time. He needed me at 7.30 in the morning. So I said, okay. I said, Do, does this fit inspirational serve? And I said, yeah. And I said, absolutely it does. And so I took, the, I took the, uh, the, the opportunity. And what happens is because I'm free to do that, I'm not wasting time on things or, that don't really fit me. I'm open to do these type of opportunities. So it's real, real simple. If, if I put it through that, if it works, if it fits, I go for it. Now, who are you? Can anybody honestly answer that? Who are you right now? Nick, who are you? A librarian, yeah. a poet. Uh, I like that. <laughs> Be a lighthouse of love to those around. Good. See, I like that. That's deep. And that's, you know, you imagine you put on there, I'm a, I'm a lighthouse director, right? <laughs> what the? Right? But again, again, what moves your soul? And here's what you remember your popcorn trail, because we all know this from a kid. It's the true happiness you leave others 
doing what makes you happy and what comes easy to you. I'm going to say this again. It's a true happiness you leave others by doing what makes you happy and comes easy with you. Now that's, that's, that's kind of like weird to think. And even, I remember coming out of the military, and I'll share a quick story with you. I, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done with the military. I'm ready to get out and transition to a new phase of my life. And, and I went in, and it said, computer science engineer, $90,000 a year. I said, I think I want to be a computer engineer. And um, so I, I enrolled at K-State University, computer science, and I took my first class. It was... Um, introduction of Pascal program and something basic. I know it was just like you build on top of the, the you know, the, the more you take, the harder the classes get. So this is an introductory course. And I remember the, the professor goes, we're sitting in a class just like this, a U-shape of computers though, like labs. And I was sitting at the end right there. And, he's, and there was about 30 students there. And he says, look, we're going to write a simple loop. When you turn the computer off and turn it back on, it should turn a certain color. And I remember this. I was like, Okay, so he had a stopwatch and he timed us and everybody was done in like 30 or 45 seconds and it took, I took the whole three minutes of course, right? So it was blue, 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 and it gets to me and it says green. My computer turned on green. I stood up in the class and said, look, I took the wrong class, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to be in this class. And that was the end of me being a computer programmer. And I tend to think about that and I was like, okay, I went after that because of the money. I go, I wonder how many people and, and it didn't come easy to me either, so I thought I, had, this is, I was in the right class, but I really wasn't. I wonder how many people are taking that computer science, that computer program, have no business being in there like myself. So I want to talk about remembering my popcorn trip. My high school reunion, one of my dear friends from, she comes up to me and she says, Jose, you wrote something in my yearbook. Now I graduated at 17 years old, it was a real tough time in my life. And I said, I don't even remember what I wrote you. She kind of got really emotional with me telling me, describing how it touched her and that she would draw strength from me to go back and read it. And she told me what I wrote, and I was like, I don't even remember what I wrote. But I do remember feeling awkward, like, okay, I'm tired of people telling me that I'm inspiring them. It's like making me feel weird. You know, I didn't want to accept that. I didn't want to own that right away. I just kind of like, okay, hey, how you been? You know, change the subject. But then again, running a profitable company. I told you about how I was sitting there, I had a multi-million dollar company, 40 employees, I didn't have to go into work, and all of a sudden I had all this time in my hand, and I'm like, okay, uh, I felt money was supposed to taste better than this, and I had time to really reflect and look at myself, and I didn't like who I was, you know. The passing of my uncle. Uh, my uncle, Johnny, wonderful man, he passed away, at the age of 55, and I went to his funeral in New York, and my, and my, my um, cousin, Olivia, knows me as Joey. She says, hey, Jose, hey. or hey, Joey, oh my gosh, Joey, she hadn't seen me in like 20 years. And she gave me a big hug and kiss, and she says, you were the most positive kid. I remember babysitting you at five and six years old. She said, it would be raining out, and your smile would just light up the whole sky. She would tell me this, and, and then she says, yeah. She goes, I fell asleep one time, you put crayons up my nose, and she said, you're just a positive kid, and she went on. I was like, wow, I keep hearing that. Now, so, so now when I say remember the popcorn trail, this is a young lady who knew me when I was five years old. And people were starting to tell me, I was like, okay. Then I fired an employee, and this is like the real turning point for me. And he wrote me like four months later, and just... And I you know, pulled up the email and go, oh, this is going to be scathing. This is going to be a mean email. And I said, hey, Jose, I just want to thank you for inspiring me. I've lost uh, like 30 pounds. I quit smoking. Um, I'm back in the school for interior design. I'm going after what I love. I just want to thank you so much for inspiring me. And I don't know where I would be without you. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So I was like, I had this, that was carrying this around for me. We got like, OK, who can I fire next? You know, I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but, but all jokes aside, that was the real turning point for me because I've heard enough people telling me. Now, I only shared four with you up here, but there's a whole list of, uh, there's a trail that I've left of inspiring people. And that led me to inspirational servant. And, you know, and the bad thing is to know who you are. Now, can you imagine being in a boardroom? And this has happened. And you've got people on phone calls from 
Cal you know, people from Washington, D.C., all the way to California. Hey, I'm director of so-and-so, I'm director of so-and-so, and I'm the president, I'm executive director, blah, 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 and going on, and I'm an inspirational servant. And I remember the one lady uh, was messing with her PDA device, kind of stopped and looked at me like, inspirational servant. But at the end, she came up to me and she goes, you know what? I was intrigued by what, when you said that, she goes, but after listening you speak at this meeting, you are an inspirational servant. Discovering who you are, remembering who you are should be aligned with your work. The next thing is the business vision or your work. And vision is really the change you see in your industry or the world if you got past your fears and realized your greatness. Can somebody um, tell me a visionary that has affected us? And I like Henry Ford is the car. <laughs> he, he obviously saw something that he didn't like, and he had the car develop, and I'm gonna tell you, not only did he develop a car, but he developed a car in a time where everybody thought he was crazy, where he was alienated. And so I'm like, wow, but it's world changing. And I, and I know, I understand that everybody's a computer program, not everybody's a vision, but join a vision. If you don't have a vision or you don't wanna create one, then join a bigger vision than the vision you have. That's what I say. If you don't have a grand vision, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> And you don't think, hey, somebody mentioned Steve Jobs. He's, he had a big vision. He, he, got, he got billions of people. He's in my household. And then change the communities. And that's why one of the main reasons why I'm here. SEDCO, improving communities through entrepreneurship. Number one killer of vision, visionary thinking. The biggest the killer of visionary thinking is fear. Because people are going to talk about you. But this is what I tell people, and I want you to walk away. The shoes that you wear, the cell phones that you have, the clothes that you have, the car that you drive, anything that you own came from who? A visionary. They saw something first and brought it to you. So you can't say to yourself, well, I don't believe. When people start saying that, I go, you, then take off the clothes that you wear. Put the car away. Because you're using somebody's vision. The pan, the spoon that you eat from, the refrigerator, is all visionary work. And I tell people all the time, you, you know, we live in a world where visionaries have created things for us to make it a better place. The number one killer of visionary thinking is fear of what people will say about you. I know it is. I'm launching a new softball fast pitch organization. It's taken me about eight, nine years to get it going finally. And I think back why, number one reason why is fear. This right here, the fantasy land. Nobody likes to be talked about, you know, crazy, you know. Okay, lack of vision it leads to what you don't want. You know, many organizations sputter and never take off. They swim in mediocrity. You know, I, I noticed that all the McDonald's are kind of, knocking them down and rebuilding them. Um, and they're, you know, I, saw, I read something on there that a lot of the owners of McDonald's franchisees want more vision, they want more direction. And even whether you're a billion dollar corporation or an entrepreneur, or somebody's thinking to start their business, you need a vision. It's like DNA to your body. Your DNA shapes who you are, it's unique, right? It's, you know, nobody's DNA is the same. Well, that's a vision, what a vision is the business. It's unique, you own it. No vision is the same. Your vision should include all your stakeholders. As you can see, you have a community, if you have investors. So you really, when you're thinking about a vision, you should include everybody. Why is it important to include everybody in your vision? You don't want to exclude anyone. You don't, because they, they, it does two things. They don't want to help you out and they become almost the rift in what you're trying to do, plus a, a large vision rallies people around you. That's what you want to do. You want to create your own world and get other people to live in it. It allows you to rally people in it. And if you start excluding people, stakeholders, that you touch with your business, your idea, your product, then that's less people you have to rally about. Let's let, that's, you know, those are people who will be, are not on board of what you're trying to do. Very important to include all your stakeholders. Um, we actually at Sitco, we have documents for you to list those stakeholders. Really think those through when you're creating your vision. 
Here are some vision no-nos. Um, you don't want to write a book. I love the, I love the entrepreneur. I ask him who the vision is, and I'm always like amazed by the mind, the human mind. They actually will say a whole book and they remember it. My vision is so and so, and I go, "You've lost me at the first sentence." Like it should be simple and right to the point. No skating around. Just like this is my vision, and it should be clear. Visions are not a goal or measurement. I'll talk a little bit about that. I always tell people, don't create any of your marketing materials before you, before you, uh, don't start with your marketing material before a vision. Very important. Don't hire people without a strong vision. Okay, let's talk about a little bit about a poor vision statement. Here's the thing, here was my first um, vision statement, minus, um, the date on there. It was like January 2003 or something. We want to be the Nextel's largest wireless provider in Wisconsin. Okay? And the reason why that's a poor vision statement, I remember it, it, was, it was crazy. My employees would work late. And I couldn't pay them overtime at the time. And they said, I don't care. I was like, we'll work for you. And so they would work. And, and, and so we got to this award ceremony at the end of the year, and we became the largest dealer, and it was like, we, I always tell people, we felt like Beyonce, Beyonce at the Grammys, we won so many awards, and everybody kept walking up there and collecting awards on our team, and I remember one of my better employees comes back and says, you know, we, we did it, but, you know, what's next? And it was so, it was so crazy is, is that when I could pay my employees over time, they didn't want to work it, <laughs> you know. I, but but because I had this vision, and we did it within a year and a half, I lost all the momentum in my in my company. That's why you don't want it a measurement. You don't want it a goal. I meant to put this up earlier, but this is some of the business symptoms without a clear vision. And this could probably, if you're not struggling with discovering who you are too, you know, you're feeling lost, no direction, always looking for the next product or service to take you to the promised land. Customer dictates your rates and services. Employees do their own things. Feeling of being stuck and not progressing. Unable to find dynamic people. And go on the list, list, on and on. I want to share some clear visions with you. Vision is to unite, inspire, and encourage the world by sharing stories. Okay. I want to share an example with you on this. Route Ball Software. We help companies grow with peace of mind by automating companies' best practices. So let, let's talk about that vision and share a visionary story with you, okay? This software company builds, it helps paratransit companies, a non-emergency transportation company, manage their day-to-day -day operations, their trips. And they, it's a nationwide software. So a business owner, an entrepreneur comes up and says, look, I've owned my business and I've been going home every day around 10 or 11. I've missed every one of my daughter's volleyball games. So we say, well, then you're not growing your business with peace of mind. He buys the software, installs it, calls up about a month and a half later to Ralph Boss and says, I don't know what to do with myself. Me and my partner are going home every day at 5 o'clock. <laughs> do you understand what vision does? See, he couldn't grow his business. Even though it was growing, he was sacrificing the family, so he wasn't growing with peace of mind. And that's what we do. We took your best practices, what you do on an everyday basis, and we automate it for you. See what vision does? That's, 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 and get people to live in that. Here's SEDCO. Improve communities through entrepreneurship. So how can I create a compelling vision? Number one is think big. But thinking big, and if you're not able to do it yourself, then surround you with somebody that can help you think big. Get your stakeholders involved. So you want to create a vision, have your partners, your people who read your magazine, people who are going to live in your home, whatever idea you have, have them involved. Face your fears, those deep-rooted fears that stop you. And then we have some worksheets at SEDCO, too. You can come on our website, you can register with us, and we can help you with, with creating a vision and going through the worksheets and the workshops as well for your ideas. I want to thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I know it's very valuable. And um, I'm very, very grateful to be here to talk to you, so.